Hello and welcome to the Real Life Sports Show. This podcast is for sports fans, whether you're playing it, interested in it or looking to learn from high achievers. My name is Sam Adams. I'm known as the Real Life Coach. I'm a business owner and a life coach and I work with sports professionals, athletes, coaches and people in and around the industry. I help those people live more expansively, more authentically, so that they can enhance their performance, whether that's playing their game or living their real life. My background is in business. I've been in business for over 20 years in property. I've mentored and coached in that industry, and that led me into being a life coach. I'm super passionate about sports, and that's what led me to working in that industry and creating this podcast. In this podcast, I'm going to be talking to some amazing human beings, some elite athletes and people from that industry. We're going to be talking about the glory, the glamour, the achievements and the medals, but we're also going to go to the real life bit, behind the scenes, what it really takes to excel. We're going to talk about the guts, the determination, the grit and the grime. For you, the listener, you're going to get some great takeaways and insight, whether you're looking to achieve for yourself around your mindset or your personal development. This is the podcast for you. So if you enjoy the podcast, I'd love for you to leave me a five-star review and any comments you have. So here we go, the Real Life Sports Show. So yeah, welcome everybody to another episode of the Real Life Sports Show, this podcast of mine. And I am so happy today because this is the first in-person podcast I've done in about 18 months, (laughs) uh, which feels so good. And it's with the one and only Sarah Stuck. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. No, thank you for giving up the time. We're here at the AIG uh, Women's Open Golf up in Carnusti. 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 And the sun's shining today, which is amazing. I've had the most incredible, like, I came up Sunday... Uh, no, Monday, and the weather was just yeah. glorious. And I was like, am I really in Scotland? Yeah. It's been amazing. I don't think it's going to stay like this, though. No, I have I'll be in my waterproofs tomorrow, probably. <laughs> I have checked the weather forecast, and uh, the rest of the week's not yeah. looking quite so good. But let's enjoy it while it's last. Exactly. I had a little bit of golf at St Andrews yesterday. I know, you've been living it up. I have an Dramoig today, which is beautiful, and you've been... I've been yeah. working hard. Yeah. 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 <laughs> anyway, for those of you that don't know, who is Sarah Stark? So let's start with that because okay. I, I'm not going to lie, you were on my hit list. I have a hit list of people okay, that I want to get good. on my podcast. Yeah. You were on it and I was very fortunate that I got asked to speak at your event, yeah. which hopefully you might talk about that a yeah, little bit. Yeah. Um, and that's how we met, which was great. Yeah. I was like, yes, I'll do it because I get yeah. to see you and I'll see you the podcast. So who is Sarah Stark? Well, um, so you kind of defy it. Well, I guess work, isn't it? That's kind of often how you define yourself. I mean, my, so I'm a sports presenter for, golf presenter for Sky Sports. Um, Yeah, run a women's reach, uh, women's network called Reach. Yeah. Um, So I guess in terms of who I am, I'm a person who's passionate about sport, passionate about life, passionate about business, kind of got a lot of interest. But yeah, if you're, hopefully if you're a sports fan or a golf fan, you've kind of seen or know me from like the past few years at Sky and yeah. kind of been climbing the ranks in the sort of TV and journalism world and yeah it's been a it's been a good ride yeah well that's I mean me personally I got to know I've become aware of you through Sky Sports obviously yeah. watching a lot of golf uh, and seeing you on the TV so that that's really how you came into my world but obviously this podcast is all about sport yeah um, you know I work with athletes and sports professionals which I absolutely love I watch a ton of sport yeah um, if I can get to a live event hence why I've come all the way up to Scotland <laughs> I will um, and to combine it with a bit of work it, like this podcasting is an absolute dream for me so I'm living my dream I think Perfect. you're living your dream I yeah guess. I always I always said that kind of my my dream job when I was a tennis player when I was younger so that was kind okay. of my ultimate dream when I was you know sort of 13 14 I wanted to be a pro tennis player right um, and then I had a really bad shoulder injury Oh, okay. um, which was horrific and I guess at, so at that age you're like if I want this and I work really hard I'm going to achieve my dreams mm. and then you realise life doesn't always work like that does it no. um, Yeah. so that unfortunately that path was no longer the one I was going to be walking down um, but I, I sort of I'm a big believer in when one door shuts another one opens and mm. I kind of thought okay if I'm not going to be 
professional sports person or an athlete, what's the next best thing? So I quickly kind of changed tack, and that mm. was yeah, that was my dream to be a sports presenter. Okay. And then my dream, as I sort of got a bit older and went through my career, to to cover golf for Sky Sports. So yeah. I've always said this is my dream job, and yeah, it Living is. Dream. Yeah. Do you think? I mean, I, I work with athletes that sometimes their careers don't get off the ground. As yeah. you know, like yours, obviously, really didn't probably get to anywhere where it could have gotten. Um, in terms of being you know, a professional sports person. Uh, and so I work with a lot of athletes that sometimes their careers end early mm. or they're trying to transition out of their sport. Yeah. How was that for you? Do you remember that really well as a kid when that dream was sort of taken away from you? Yeah, I mean, it was, it's heartbreaking, isn't it? Because mm. like I said, you have that, you have that, you don't realise that at that age that things don't always work out. Mm. You just, you live in this idealistic world yeah. where you think everything's just going to work out okay and then yeah. suddenly you're like god no actually it's not and I think but I think at that age you're so resilient aren't you I mean god I wish I had that resilience now <laughs> <laughs> I bet you have it you just, that kind it's of, there when you need yeah, it generally but it's it's I think you just it's easy it's easy when you're younger isn't it mm. to say okay that didn't work but I'm you know 16 I've got the rest of my life ahead of me and mm. this is what I want to do now so um but yeah it's hard and I think it took me it took me a lot. It's still stung for a long time because yeah. that—that's you know that your hopes and your dreams, and then they're just dashed yeah. by fate, by life. It's not nothing, no fault of your own, mm. um, and it was heartbreaking. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that is life, and that's you know setbacks are part of life, and being resilient is important. So you know it's really important. I think that my attitude kind of changed. I was in. Went to Millfield on a tennis scholarship, and then it was actually when I was I went to the States on a tennis scholarship. Oh, it was actually amazing. when I was there, yeah. met um, an amazing tennis coach who kind of taught me a lot about attitude because mm -hmm. I felt like my attitude was quite bad when I was yeah. sort of I was sulking a little bit. And, um, <laughs> well, you're 13, 14, yeah. there's hormones going yeah, all over the place. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's gonna happen. Yeah, and then she kind of taught me a lot about attitude, and I think that really kind of that was a big life lesson for me. Yeah. So that's definitely helped me as, as I've got older. Yeah, I think that the thing now you see in sport, um, so many tennis players and sports professionals yeah. have people that help them with their mindset and mentally, yeah. you know, hence that's really part of my work that yeah. I do. Um, and, and certainly on the tennis circuit, you know, yeah. th that's a real big part of it now, isn't it? Working yeah. on your attitude, your mindset. For sure, and changing I mean, you, that. you look at tennis and golf and there's so much is between, so much of sport between the years, but a, a, an individual sport like tennis and golf, mm. certainly golf. I mean, I just, you know, I, I'm a keen golfer. I have been, you know, for the last sort of, well, since university, really. Mm. I love it. But that stationary ball, how much time you have to think, it's, it's incredible. Mm. Like, you, you're there, you're walking up to your shot, you know, all these emotions and feelings going on and these thoughts. Yeah to control the mind and then be able to execute a shot under the most intense pressure. It still blows my mind watching these, you know, men and women doing it week in, week out. Oh, me too. I think that's why, I don't know, I mean, I always loved playing sport. Yeah. I'm sensing that you did as well. And I, yeah, just, it, it blows my mind as yeah. well to think how they do it, yeah. you know, how the, like I said, under that level of pressure, because you just think the adrenaline, what that would do to you physically anyway, when you yeah. have to hit a shot or, you know, in golf, it's so, you know. It's fine margins, it's, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's really yeah. fine, and you've got all that adrenaline, um, all you know, all the emotions going on. I was talking about it yesterday, actually, to my friend Karen when we were on the 18th at St. Andrews, yeah. and it's quite a simple hole, the 18th, yeah. actually. Uh, and I said to her, do you know what? It, it, I think it's a good thing it's a simple hole because yeah. you imagine coming up the 18th yeah. and you're about to win. Yeah. You know, you're at St Andrews. I know. And if you made that hole really yeah. difficult, can you? I don't, I don't no. think that would be a good way to end any no. tournament like that. You but know. then you look at the 18th there at Carnoustie and it's a brew, you know, yeah. depending on which way the wind's blowing yeah, or whatever. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's it's tough. And I, I think I used to suffer when I was a junior tennis player. I really mm. used to, I could never quite replicate the way I played in practice in, in matches, mm. I always, I did suffer tension, yeah. tension quite a lot. And that, it's, I always say, Lee Westwood, I remember him saying, he was working with a sports psychologist and his mm. goal was to play like he just doesn't care. And yeah. that's the ultimate, isn't it? Play like you don't care when you absolutely do. Yeah. So being laid back and having those feelings and trying to get into that physically in that in that state is... Yeah, it's crucial. Yeah. And, and that's something that I work on with, with people that I work yeah. with, it's about, it's not about not caring. I mean, you can't really ever eradicate no. that. But it's about um, you're just playing tennis. Like yeah. if I was working with a tennis player, it is just remember that th this is just a tennis game, yeah. and you love playing tennis. Yeah. 
so enjoy that experience and that moment don't think about what, yeah, yeah. what comes after it it's I mean, sport is very much in the moment isn't it you know yeah. to handle you know this point this shot or whatever yeah. this stroke um you have to be in the moment and it's very much about that but actually and i think uh, Roger, uh, Roger Federer, he had like uh, a sports psychologist, I'm not sure if it's sports psychologist, but he had someone helping him because his attitude was really poor in the beginning yeah. and helped him flip that and just to think, and I've heard him say before, I just go out there like I'm playing tennis, that yeah. I'm here to play tennis, I love yeah. playing tennis, I just want to play a tennis match yeah. um, and I'm not thinking about the Wimbledon title or yeah, whatever. Yeah. I'm playing tennis and, and I love playing tennis and it's as simple as simple that, as that. It, trying it, to keep that yeah but it sounds simple doesn't it Do but it's just day. it's not and I've always been like a massive overthinker as well so yeah <laughs> <laughs> to try and get my mind to, to empty my mind is, is not an easy thing no and we were talking before weren't we and we were talking about meditation and yeah. stuff and that it's and I believe it's super powerful and and that's a big part like I'm really keen on self mastery and personal development that's kind of like my world and self mastery is about yeah. being able to quieten in the mind in those yeah. moments when chaos reigns around you that's how uh, any of us can have a fulfilled yeah. life isn't it that yeah. we can quieten the noise from because the world is going to keep doing what it's yeah. going to do you know what's going on out there that's going to happen yeah. but it's what's going on in here for you if you can manage that you master yourself you I do truly believe you are happier uh, you will have a happier more fulfilled life definitely um, but it it's, it's not, not easy, easy. <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> if you can help me with that that'd be great yeah I can help you with that um, I'm still working on it for myself but, that, but I've been doing it for 20 odd years hence yeah, why I'm yeah, coach yeah. Um, and I love that stuff because yeah. I just love human behaviour yeah. and, and how we think and trying to better ourselves and I think that's, a, that's an awesome thing to, yeah, to, to do but I want to talk to you about sport anyway I want to go back to sport because you got into tennis so yeah. how, how did that happen was that through family were they keen so, to get you playing so yeah my dad was always really my dad was always very sporty mum not so much so I kind of followed my dad dad's path really and yeah just like the local tennis club it was mm. kind of I mean not no real tennis in the in the background in the family but just kind of fell in love kind of the local club and that was it and mm. just kind of had a had a hook played a bit at school and then yeah developed it went to went to Millfield and and, and on from there but I started quite late um and I think at that, you know, when you look back at kind of like Jennifer Capriati and you kind yeah. of that, yeah, Monica Sellers and yeah. you, you sort of, they're, they're like child prodigies. And I, I definitely, think maybe it's still the case in tennis, but I think maybe less so sort of longevity, you know, players having longer careers. But yeah, yeah I think just an automatic, always love sport. Tennis was kind of became my thing and, and that's yeah. how it developed from there, really. Did you play other sports in and yeah, around that? Yeah, like netball and hockey and stuff at school. Mm. Rounders, I was a big fan of rounders. Yeah, <laughs> see, I remember rounders. Nobody but hardly plays it rounders now, do they? Rounders the best. I, I loved yeah, rounders. Yeah, yeah. It was probably my favourite, yeah. apart from athletics. I was athletics, massively... same as well, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, all sports. But then I think I wanted to try and focus and just try and get good at one. So mm. I sort of went down the tennis route. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that was it, yeah. I think it's you know it's interesting that you've gone on to to this career. Did, did you go and study journalism after? So yeah, so when I, so when I was in the states, that's kind of when I decided I was in physio every day, slamming nightmare in my shoulder, not kind of playing and doing what I wanted to do. And mm. then I, I said, I kind of it was like an overnight thing. I was like, right, what am I going to do now? Right. And then okay, I'm going to be a sports journalist because I can still get a front row seat to, to watch and, and see that's all this. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> and then. Um, started writing for my university newspaper and that was it then I came back from the States and then I went to Loughborough yeah. and I literally spent every holiday doing work experience wow. um, at you know Match of the Day and Grandstand yeah. and, you yeah. know and Daily Mirror Daily Mail ev everywhere I could really yeah. I just made it my it's not an easy career very competitive quite, very cutthroat is it so yeah just because it's it's a fun career it's a good career everybody wants to do it so yeah. I, I said right well I need to dedicate myself and work really hard to achieve this and that's what I did I think having a plan quite early helped me yeah I never like once I decided that was it just sort of kind of Head self down and it's that yeah. passion and desire yeah. isn't it which yeah. on the podcast we talk about that a lot obviously you yeah. get a lot of athletes you know get a lot of athletes or former athletes and we talk about that passion and that purpose and that yeah. desire and having that drive yeah but which is great, yeah. But also, there is there is a you know there's a double edged sword to everything. I believe there's a paradox to everything. Did were you kind of laser focused on focused on this is my career and this is my path to the exclusion of everything else? Yeah, I think so. I just knew that I felt quite focused at that age. I think when I went to Loughborough, I mean, I nearly left. I got offered a job match of the day in my first year at, oh, at really? uni. Not not on the like the in front mm. of camera, sort of behind the camera stuff. But I think it's one of those careers where experience kind of matters more than you know right 
educational background yeah. really so I did sports science degree um, used the time at Loughborough to gain the work experience in the holidays and then I did a post-grad um, year in industry well mm-hmm. I was at Manchester United Television doing the journalism degree Yeah. so I became a fully qualified journalist so but yeah I think yeah, probably. So sort of, I mean, I probably look back and think I probably didn't lead a normal kind of university life. I wasn't probably, I wasn't, wasn't the party girl that You're some of my busy friends doing were. Work experience. Yeah, it's quite, <laughs> but I was even really focused at that age. And I think, you know, I think it's a little bit different now. I think you look at, I don't know, early twenties now, and they seem to. I think it's changed. Yeah. Whereas at uni, at that you know, that time, that age, it was kind of like you just went to have fun. And, yeah. But I was always. I don't know, I always sort of thought, hmm, I want a bit more than that. Yeah. So I was always pretty focused yeah, on very focused the prize. on what I was doing. Yeah. 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 It, and and so, like I say, sometimes that can have a level you know, that can be other things like you know, um it's funny you're talking about like teenagers and you, you know you kind of like you don't really think too far outside no. of the box do you or, or wider angles yeah. I did a talk for some young footballers and I, and I and I kind of tease them a little bit I ask them a few questions and see what, see about their thinking it is very laser focused which yeah. is great like yeah. I said but you have to have a plan B I think or, or or kind of have other interests and this is the bit that I do as, as a life coach with athletes is that sport is a part of your life it yeah. is not everything and yeah. you can apply that to anything like you being at uni and, and being laser focused on this yeah. is my career this is what I'm going to do that's great yeah. but it isn't the be all and end all it's not your whole identity no um, and, um, you know CEOs guys boardrooms business owners athletes they can get really caught up in their, their thing yeah. to the detriment of themselves and other friends yeah, family and um, sure. wider things did, you, did that happen to you yeah, or did you I think probably yeah I mean for sure I think definitely I think I'm probably relationships more than <laughs> I think yeah it's just it's quite I mean I think the hardest thing in terms of the last say the last 10 years has been probably traveling right. so it's been yeah the, for me one of the hardest things in life has been balance isn't it? you mm. know how do you balance family friends work Self care, mm. um, you know, spiritually, what you need to, you know, how you, what you what you want to aspire mm. to do and, and be, and yeah, it's hard because I'm the sort of person that I want it, want it all, you know, and yeah. why why can't you? But it's hard to get that balance right. Something mm. often slips. Yeah, certainly for periods in your life, and I think, yeah, I think the the job has been quite all consuming, and I probably have. I've always I've always been really conscious of a good work life balance, definitely, but you don't always get it right. And I think no. but it's a demanding job. It's kind of you know, it's not like you know, it's not like you can one day you're not feeling very well, you're just not gonna turn up to the office. You know, if I'm not there, I'm not on air, I'm not, you know, yeah. I'm letting you there's a program there, there's a whole other load of mm. other people mm. behind what you're doing and So it's a case of showing up, putting the face yeah. on it as it were, you know. Yeah, that. and it's hard, like sometimes, you know, stuff going on in your life or things happening, you've got to smile, put your lippy on and, yeah. and get out there in front of that camera and you're like, oh, this is the struggle yeah, today. It's literally like yeah. game face, yeah. isn't it? But that's same for the same athletes. for athletes, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So get that, but it's just it's rewards have been massive and an amazing career and amazing job, but it's like anything, it's it's high pressure. Mm. Again, you know, sports stars have to there's pros and cons to everything mm. so yeah it hasn't I don't think it has always been easy and mm. I think you know Sky is an amazing place to work but they demand quite a lot of you and they demand right. high standards so mm. you're always on it and you know the, the travelling for sure has not been easy right. you know long periods away from home and, and I've sort of I've, I've cut back on the travelling the last few years definitely mm. um is that is that through choice? Is that because you you're more established in your role and you, you can get, do that? Yeah, a bit less? I think when you're young, early on in your career, you're kind of yeah. you're trying to make it, aren't you? And you're just you just say yes to everything, mm. um, and it's easier to be to put your demands out there mm. as you get more established and part of the team. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. Makes sense. I suppose. Yeah. It's like any any career, isn't yeah. it? Once you got, you know, you you'll do anything to get your foot in the door. Yeah, once your foot's in the door and you show you've got, yeah. you know, you're good at what you do, then yeah, you can maybe squeeze a little bit more juice out Definitely. of the, the orange, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. I mean, I think when I even like my contract when I first started at Sky, I was probably doing thirty odd weeks. Mm. Whereas now I'm, my contract's twenty weeks. So mm. even that's just a massive difference. Wow. Yeah. And it's 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 demanding as well. It takes a lot out of you. If you're flying back from the states and you know, you're landing on a Tuesday and then 
fly back overnight Monday night, landing on a Tuesday, then back in the studio on Thursday. I mean, no, the jet lag is brutal. Jet lag, yeah. Yeah. Jet, jet, jet lag and me are not no, friends. I, I could not do that. I'd need a week. But it literally takes me about a week to get over it. Yeah, it would be um, a week. I was just talking to one of them. Um, one of the girls from Golf Channel there, I and mean, she's mm. just flown from the West Coast, and I'm like, she's, you know, it's just it's hard. Nuts. Yeah, yeah, it's not it's brutal. So uh, let's talk about golf because obviously yeah. that's predominantly what you do on Sky Sports. How, how did that? How did you first become get involved in golf? Because obviously you play and you yeah. play. I have once heard somebody say you were an average golfer. Now your handicap to me is not an average golfer. Who said I was average? I don't know. I no, heard I it. To, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, fi- we'll find them <laughs> and we'll hunt them down. Yes. Um, so you so, so you wouldn't call yourself an average girl. No, I mean look, I got down six was my lowest. Yeah. So um, I mean, I've been told I think because of the the tennis, the hand eye coordination is very good, like right. golf to tennis, tennis to golf. Yeah. I do. I think I. I mean, I did. I got told when I was younger I could have been pro if I'd have. So I know. Sorry, I hate, that, but you know, it's. I, I was speaking <laughs> earlier. I might ask Sarah if she wants to have a game of golf while I'm yeah, working. I, I don't know. I'll bother now. No, well, I'm not. It's not not the same now. <laughs> I can't putt at the minute. Or so how did? How, <laughs> brilliant. Let's have a game. I might actually win a couple of holes. Um, how did you first get into golf? Yeah. Then? So so when the tennis kind of um, ended. I randomly again, fa- uh, my uncle lives at Glen Eagles in Scotland, oh, awesome. so went up for a family holiday, had a had a hit, mm. like totally hooked from day one. Instantly, yeah, day yeah. one, brilliant. Um, I mean, it's not hard to fall in love with golf at Glen Eagles because it's stunning. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's on. That's on. You know, I've got a couple of lists. That's on the list. Have you not been? <laughs> not been. been. No. no. Should it's, go. Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, St Andrews is a massive tick. Yeah, of so, yeah. Um, But yeah, so so that was it, and that's and that kind of. Again, the coordination thing, it, it really, because I kind of got it, mm. and I hit a couple of, and you feel that connection, that's dragging you like, yeah, this mm. is amazing. And, I, and I, I did kind of want something to fill that competitive void, I think. Mm. Um, so, yeah, and that was it, really. And then I sort of got more into it, started playing, worked, um, Man United TV, my first job, and I did BBC in the, in the Midlands, mm. and BBC in London. And then as I got more into golf, I then knew that I wanted to try and specialise in golf. Right, just falling in love with the falling game, in love playing with it, it and watching loved it. Loved it as a, you know, thought as a career opportunity, amazing, mm. you know, nice people, you get to travel to some nice places, you know, yeah. it's a nice sport to it's work in. It's not many bad golf courses really, is it? No, I mean, most of them like, yeah. Exactly, it's just a good, it's just a good sport, so that yeah. was kind of it, and I was like, yeah, like, I want to do that, so that was, that was kind of the plan. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Worked my way and brilliant. Yeah, so Satanta was my first kind of big golf job, and then when I was there, then when the Sky job came up, I'd obviously had some experience in golf. Yeah, got caught, got a call to go in for a screen test. I think it was about four or five of us, and then got the job. Yeah, brilliant. So, so it's from Satanta to Satanta. Yeah. Uh, actually, well, uh, Satanta went bust unfortunately, so I lost my job. Right, went back to the BBC. So I left a staff job at the BBC, which was a risk, but I yeah. knew that I had to do it. Took the Satanta job, when when that went kaput, went back to the BBC freelance, mm. and then then I got the call about Sky. Yeah, Thank, thankfully got it, and that was it. Because when I when I did a little, obviously I do a little Wikipedia search of all of my guests. Oh God, rude what, not to. Know, yeah. What's <laughs> no, to say that I was an average golfer. <laughs> <laughs> That hurt, didn't it? The average it's, golf of it. Oh, so I didn't say it. Please don't. Say, please don't be offended. It's not me. Oh. Somebody else said it, and I was like. I think seven or six is an average golfer, but well, anyway, it wasn't on Wikipedia. If it is, I'm going to go in and yeah, cut, you're cut gonna change, change Wikipedia. <laughs> Brilliant golfer. <laughs> um, could have been a professional. Yeah, you either try harder. I don't know. What do you want me to write? Let me know and I'll go and do it. If her attitude had been better, she could have made it. Yeah, <laughs> I should have known me back then. I forgot what I was going to say now. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah, so when I did the Wikipedia thing, you have worked in so many places as a journalist. Like, you started off with MUTV, like I say, Satanta, BBC. There is literally, and you're a writer as well. Yeah, so I do. So obviously with the journalism stuff, I haven't read Wikipedia. I need to check out my page and see what it says. (laughs) Yeah, you need to go Um, and update the golf bit, that's for sure. Um, But yeah, so I did the journalism qualification. Always love the writing side of things as well. I actually want to do more of that. So I've actually just... Sorry, shameless plug. Just um, <laughs> been hired by Golf Channel as uh, Golf Monthly as their new. Oh, I um, do know that. <laughs> yeah, as their new columnist. So that's yeah. cool. So, yeah, I love the write, writing side of things. Yeah. Um, but 
I guess TV's always kind of been at the forefront, but I would like to do more written stuff. Do you think that would, you know, obviously, do you feel like you always want to be at the forefront, like on screen, or do you think writing might be something you'd I think, like to sort of be, be yeah, doing more predominantly than, than on screen? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's, you know, it's probably have done a lot of what I wanted to achieve mm. in TV. Yeah, I just think probably writing as a lifestyle choice is quite good, isn't it? Mm. Like, you know, you look at. Um, with COVID and what's happened and the ability to maybe, you know, to still work but, you know, to be at home and mm. a bit more and so yeah I think I would like to explore that definitely Yeah, that's, I mean I, look, I'm, I'm, no, I'm no writer but I've written a few articles for magazines and stuff like that and I actually, for me, it's a it's a challenge it's a personal yeah. development challenge because I, I left school with not very very little qualifications so to write and get something published for me was like a massive yeah, win yeah. and now uh, September I'm starting to write my book oh, cool. so, which will be amazing yeah. but it's for me it's a real stretch but even though it's a stretch I can feel the beauty in it yeah, yeah. like yeah. it's it's something that every day I think right write something today it doesn't really matter what it is just write it's very there, thera- is there is a beauty there is a beauty yeah I find it very therapeutic but I just find it really rewarding as well yeah um yeah it's quite magical whereas sometimes you know you're TV's amazing. It's very kind mm. of instantaneous. Sometimes it can feel a bit soulless in, yeah. a, in a weird way. Well, it's there and it's, yeah. it's there and then it's yeah. gone, isn't it? Really? Yeah. I know you can watch things on demand and repeat, but actually, books, if I think about, I've got loads of books. Yeah. I always have about five on my bedside yeah, table. Yeah. And I turn the pages down, I highlight, I write in them, and I'll go back to them, pick it up, pick yeah. it up, pick it up. But yeah. TV for me is not something I do that. Like you say, no. for me, it's very, yeah. it's there, it's gone. It's gone, yeah. So. I think there is a you know there's a beauty skill in skill in writing as well and also being in that right mindset that frame of mind to be able to put pen to paper and, and produce the goods I think is is and when you do it's really satisfying because you you kind of got you you've kind of got to be in that flow yeah so to get it to get it right it's very hard do you find like for me if I'm going to write something I have to just go away complete silence yeah. and be in a little gin corner. helps <laughs> Nice, nice, nice gin. Gin. Nice I think I love gin. gin. It doesn't know something about it. it kind of helps the gin up. No, I wish I did. It's my tipple, so I'm not a big drinker, but I do like a gin. So I don't know. There's something about you know a nice gin and tonic and and a, and a journal. Do you and, need a nice yeah. journal? Does it need to yeah, be pretty? Do, and oh, look, yeah, 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 to, yeah, yeah. A nice pen. Exactly. It's me, got, I'm yeah. like, I use this. Look, Get your biro. Me, yeah. Oh yeah. The digital notepad, which I've not even looked at. Yes. So I need to get myself one of those. I've got like 50 questions on here for you yeah. that I've not even looked at. Um, <laughs> I didn't think I'd need them, but I always have them as backup. Um, but yeah, rice is very therapeutic, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, love it. You know, so if I can do more the next few years, that'd be great. Do you think you want to write a book, or is yeah, it just you're so happy I've, with the columns and things no, like that? I've got a couple of ideas for books, actually, mm. that I... That sports I'm, related? Uh, yeah, one sports related. So I did a... Um, a series for we kind of did it in COVID called Life Lessons Through Sport that I did oh, with that yeah, was on my list yeah, of questions to yeah, talk about that so which was amazing and I kind of want to do hopefully we'll do more series mm. of that um, but I think potential with a book as well maybe yeah I'd um, definitely buy that book yeah I would love to write that book quite frankly yeah. because I read obviously I read sporting books and yeah. you know about being your best about attitude about mindset about yeah. what it takes to be elite which is you know yeah. a bit of what this podcast has been about you know speaking to people that are in the industry yeah. and elite athletes and what it really takes and that's obviously yeah. the lessons that you know your I, program yeah I've always just really been into the mental side of sport sports psychology mm. like you said the personal development how, you know being a, a better person self mastery all that I love that and mm. so for me to when I'm speaking to the players, like this week, for example, I'm doing you know the hosting, but the post round interviews, and you get oh, right. you know like two or three minutes post round. It's very kind of reflective. That's quite about, pressure, isn't it? To do yeah, those two it, minutes. Yeah, it is, but it's very reactive to what you know the season, the round today, the challenges of this week, mm. and, which is great, and I love that side of it. But I also love the more kind of sit down, deep interviews, finding out mm. what who they are, what makes them tick, yeah. what the pressures that they feel, and what goes on inside their mind, and that's kind of what. Life lessons through sport was all about, you know, resilience, attitude, um, you know, keeping keeping positive in adversity, growing from mm. adversity was one of the one of the themes. And I just found it enthralling. Yeah. So no. I know some of their stories anyway, like we did Ian Poulter on attitude. For me one of the the best sporting attitudes out there. Right. You know, he you know, and he said he's a, obviously a good player, but he's ninety five percent achieved what he has because of his attitude. Yeah. And people with 
way more talent and half his attitude. I haven't got near what he has in no. his career. And, and that happened, you know, I always say that, and I, you know, when I'm talking with, whether it's a client or anyone, you, you know, you can have all the skill in the yeah. world, but if you've got no will and no decent mindset, you are not going yeah. to win. Yeah. And if you've got a starting line and you've got a guy that's in top physique, you yeah. know, physically, you yeah. know, ripped and trained to, you know, nth yeah. degree, but their mindset is shit, but you've got the guy that's, you know, he's yeah. in pretty good shape, yeah. but his attitude is off the chart. Yeah. He, he's going to win. Yeah, definitely. He is going to win. Uh, and that's just how it is. Yeah. You yeah. know, and every athlete that I've interviewed, every athlete I've worked with, they all get it and they yeah. all know that. Yeah. I was talking to a UFC fighter, um, uh, Raquel Pennington, last week, and she said for her, mindset and attitude is 90% yeah. of her getting Definitely. in that octagon. Yeah. That's Definitely. incredible. And yeah. most athletes will say that. Yeah. So I, I've always kind of loved that side. So if I could do more, more in that genre, that would be amazing for yeah. me. Out of that series that you did, who was I know you did Pulse and I know you yeah. did uh, Jimmy White who was, Jimmy White was brilliant was he yeah. was that probably one of the ones you yeah, enjoyed the most I loved, I, yeah because randomly I used to love watching snooker yeah I, I did I as a kid to, yeah. my dad used to watch it Same. so I watched it with my so dad my dad was like sat there in the lounge smoking his cigar and we were, <laughs> it was just something about I don't know like sort of the cold winter nights watching yeah. snooker did you used to watch Pop Black no the old Sunday no you know, didn't watch that no I'm really old though so I'm older than you so um yeah, no, I don't, yeah, I don't well, I'm apologising. I'm just older than you. It was this sun, on Sunday. You used to have this thing called Pop Black. I'm trying to think of the guy that used to host it. But anyway, and they just play snooker on a Sunday, and okay, it would just no, be I like this know, series. Right? That, yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, up. yeah, well, <laughs> you probably won't. But. I'll Google it. Uh, but yeah, no, Jimmy White was cool. Just kind of, and that's still that belief that he still has that he can be a world champion. Yeah. You know, yeah. what is it, what, so what was it, 57, I think he is. Is he? Uh, yeah. Wow, Christ. You know, still believes he can do it. It's like Serena Williams, isn't it? I mean, I'm a, mass, I'm a huge Serena yeah. Williams fan, um, and I know lots of people have written her off yeah. many, many times, and she um, is still here. You know, yeah. I, you know, she's playing the US Open this year. Yeah. I know she mentally thinks that she can still do it, yeah. and because of her attitude and her mindset, yeah, there's every chance that she can. It's belief, isn't it? Like, how yeah. many people, you know, if you don't... If you don't believe it, no one else is going to. Mm. So you've got to summon that belief in somewhere. Mm, absolutely. Um, so I know he was, he was good. Adam Rippon as well talks about authenticity, kind mm. of dealing with sexuality. And as a high profile athlete, that was really cool. Mm. Um, but oh. yeah, I, I Sorry, yeah, no, it's just, so I think just kind of what they have to deal with and what they've, what they've done in their life really. Yeah. It John, is fascinating, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's Johnny Nelson the boxer yeah. confidence issues used to have massive self doubt and confidence yeah. issues you know that imposter syndrome theme comes yeah. up a lot don't think I'm good enough and yet they go on to have a great career and now obviously in the public domain with Sky you know talking to millions on, on the camera yeah. um, on TV screen so do yeah, you ever amazing. get that do you ever because obviously you, 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 you know, you're sitting there and there's a lot of people <laughs> watch yeah, golf it's funny. on I, Sky yeah. do you ever get those did you in the beginning yeah, is it something you managed definitely. to dealt with and I think you know bigger events certainly you know like the Ryder Cups and, and the Opens and the Masters you've done the Ryder Cups yeah I've done the Ryder Cups oh, and the Masters and the Masters is, is nerve wracking is it Cause, yeah because you kind of got to be on your best behaviour because of the the rules and restrictions yeah. at Augusta National so you're always a bit like got to be careful what I say right. you can't be as expressive as, as you can at the other majors that's, that's the one thing about sport for me uh, you know and I watch a lot of sport I listen to a lot of interviews and things like that and I hate how um, I guess it's it's structured some of the interviews like you know I, watch, I used to watch a lot of football interviews yeah. and, and they just say the right thing say the right yeah. thing say, and, I, and, I, and I just don't watch them anymore no. because it's just it's so vanilla. Yeah. It, it, and I, me as a as a viewer, I just don't enjoy that. No. I want to. I hence why I do this yeah. podcast probably. Yeah. Because I just want to have a conversation. Yeah, exactly. Like, can we just have a chat yeah. about how was that? Yeah, and like yeah, yeah. you know, and keeping it really real. Yeah. And I see a lot of interviews, and I appreciate what you're saying that obviously there is etiquette at some yeah. of these events. Um, but one of the things for me is that we, we, I think, sport has lost in those interviews some of the realness and the rawness yeah, of, of it. They're media trained, aren't they? And they mm. have to, you know, they. I think a lot of these athletes and sports stars they don't they don't need that added distraction. So, you know, for us, you know, Roy McElroy is always a great interview. Mm. He always gives he's always honest, he always gives you sound bites, he always gives you stuff that's your, he's giving us stuff mm. that we want for our jobs. Yeah. Whereas it maybe doesn't always benefit him. 
No. You know, he doesn't want to be in the media. He doesn't want to be quoted. He doesn't or well, doesn't need to be. You know, it's a distraction from what he's trying to do. Mm. So I, I get it, but we want we want the newsworthy lines. Of and, course, yeah. yeah, yeah you know. To do our no jobs. different to this podcast. Yeah. You know, my editor will take out the sound bites or the yeah. quotes and be like, you know, those are the headlines and yeah. we want those yeah. bits. Exactly. They're, they're the grabbers, aren't yeah, they? The exactly. The it's what, yeah. So, what gets the attention? So, I, I get it, but I'm like you. It's that's why I kind of quite like the the personal stuff or away mm. from tournament mm. interviews because you get can try and get them a bit more yeah. to open up a bit more. Who's the, uh, when you talk about opening up a bit more, who, I mean, you've interviewed pretty much everyone, I think, in, in the golfing world, certainly yeah. Tiger and everyone, yeah, haven't yeah, you? Yeah. yeah. Who, who, who have you enjoyed most? I, mean, I know it's difficult because a lot of them, you like to say, you only get a couple of minutes. Yeah, but. I, th- I love, I've always loved Sergio. I've always kind of, I've known him for years and we kind of, you know, kind of got to know each other well. Yeah. And I just, I love the fact that he, I don't know, because I guess we've developed a, a bit of a, I need to speak to, um, Develops a bit of, a, uh, I guess, a bit of a relationship there. I've mm. always felt like he probably trusted me, so I think sometimes I've, I've pushed him, and after some tough losses, mm. got, got him to open up and be emotional, which yeah. is amazing. Mm. Um, so he's kind of one of my favourites for sure. Rory, as I said, I just think quite like, raw and yeah, yeah real. A, honest, and, and again, got to know him quite well. And I think you develop that relationship, and hopefully they can they trust you a little bit more. Tiger's great, um, tough at the beginning speaking to him when I quite guarded and obviously but when again when you get to know him he's always been great mm. and, um, yeah I think most golfers are they give mm. you something so mm. but I definitely say Sergio and Rory my probably top two top two yeah. yeah that's amazing yeah so I'm conscious of time I don't want to uh, keep you too long, but Sorry. I do want to talk about some. You you are a very busy woman. Yes. Um, so I want to talk about some of the other things that <laughs> yeah. you're doing. Well, obviously your network, so yeah. um, and your leadership yeah. stuff that you're doing. Um, tell us a little bit about that, because obviously you're really passionate about that. Yeah, I just think women in having well, sort of t- working in environments which are quite male dominated, so you know TV and sport and etc so I think I've always kind of had that passion for women hopefully trying to achieve their dreams and getting mm. to where they want to be so reach is a network where we kind of support and empower women to do that I've also started doing a lot of next generation events now so mm. kind of how do we use our network of successful women to inspire the young girls to be the next kind of leaders yeah. future leaders so that's yeah that's a huge kind of love of mine really mm. um, and I'd like to do more in that space definitely so sort of the gender balance and inequality I think you know, I, I still think we're playing catch up and why are we so massively yeah, yeah so. so that's kind of that's a bit of a passion project for me so where do you see that going what do you what are your hopes for um, that I think we want to try and build the business and grow it I think mm. as well commercially we've got some really good sponsors on board um, so definitely sort of opportunities in, in that regard um, we're working with some quite cool sponsors and working with Pearson the publisher oh the, yeah. Um, yeah the educational group so we're doing a lot with them um, so I don't know I see I mean in my in, in my ideal world we, we grow it and then maybe we look at an exit strategy and try and there's an acquisition to be done with kind of a, a management consultancy or an accountant mm. sort of like the, the Accentures or, or, or somebody like that or even a Pearson in terms of the content side of things so right. that's kind of my, my feeling with that if we can I mean it's very much a side hustle at the minute for mm. me, me and my business partner um, we kind of yeah, we've both got a lot on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sensing yeah. you're someone that likes to, to have yeah, a few things on. I do, but that can sometimes be a fault as well, I think. Mm. It's hard to get, you know, I want to do what I do well. Mm. And I want to, you know, not spread myself too, too thin. thin. Yeah. yeah. So what, talking of, of, of that and spreading yourself thin, but what do you do outside? Because obviously you, your job has been very demanding up yeah. to this point. What, who are you outside of that? You know, Because we see people on TV, don't we? You know, yeah. also, you know, We see the athletes and we, we make assumptions, we make, yeah. you know, we presume and we make judgments, that's just human yeah. behaviour. But what are you like doing outside of your job? Who are you outside um, of the, off of the screen? Well, I've also just, I'm kind of, I haven't publicly sort of told, I know you know this, but I'm not, Public, I haven't sort of gone public with it, but I'm, mm. I'm expecting my first child in January, um, so that's going to be a whole new life for me. Um, yeah, so well, you forget be, everything yeah, else exactly. because yeah, that's you know, my job now. Yeah, um, yeah, that's going to be weird, and I think um, slightly, you know, I've led quite a selfish life. I think not in a bad way, but just in being very focused, like athletes, and sort of I went from playing sport to to in this career where mm. you have to 
be quite focused and single-minded. So that does, it worries me a bit about making sure that I can give everything to this little person. Mm. So that's going to be a challenge. Yeah. Um, but an amazing one. Slightly nervous as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I should think most first-time mums, parents are, are, yeah, yeah, are yeah. fairly... I, I mean, my kids are adopted, but I do know how nervous I was yeah. when they first came into our world. Yeah. And suddenly, I'd get these... Not scare you, but yeah. I'd get these waves of emotion yeah. of like, oh, I had twins, yeah. so it's like, I'm responsible for yeah. these, know, <laughs> these humans. And it's just I like... Said, well, it's funny, because my, with my cousins, I'm very close to my... My cousins lost... So we lost... So my cousin Emily, the, her two boys, mm. and then really close, Luca's, what is Luca now, 19, and Sasha's 16, and then my brother's kids, so my two nephews and niece, really close, mm. and I'm always like the irresponsible adult, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm always like, 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 like the role. fun auntie or the fun cousin, yeah. um, so they're like, they're like, right, Sarah, how's this going to work? Because yeah. you're now, you're, but that's you can also, still be, yeah, yeah, exactly. You can be a fun mum. Yeah, but I need, no course, but also probably, I'm like the one that they come to when they want to mess around and do stupid stuff. Yeah. And, uh, and let them kind of do what they want. It's um, nice doing that, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, so, oh. but I need to probably be a little bit more responsible. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, a there balance. is a huge responsibility yeah, yeah. that comes with being a parent, but yeah. equally, you know, you as a person, you still have to have your needs yeah. met. I mean, obviously, parenting is probably part of that; those needs, yeah. but those individual personal needs, yeah. you know, obviously, your sport, your career, your writing, yeah. so, your business, your net reach. I know the ba- the balance is going to be the balance is going to be tough, and I, I've, I've got quite into. I know it's a passion of yours as well. I've got quite into property in the last few years as well, mm. and I I love it. I'm kind of it's like an addiction. There's something about I don't know. It's like a bit of addiction. Yeah. So I've got really into that, and that's that's taken up a bit of my time as well. So I know I need to just I know I need to be careful with how I manage everything. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think I'm excited about the next the next chapter. Do you? Good luck with that, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any regrets from sort of the last, you know, or the years that you've been in media and journalism? You know, because you have been, like, say, pretty focused. You yeah. got into golf. You knew that, you know, you wanted to, to get into, you know, on TV with the golf and stuff yeah. like that. And you've achieved that. It's been amazing. Yeah. Are there any regrets from any of that? Or is it, um, how does that sit with you? Yeah, not, no, I don't think so. I try not to regret. I mean, I think, like I said, it's, I, I find it hard with relationships. That's been giving... The, giving the right amount to that you know that person by your side I think mm. I've struggled with that quite a lot but I think some of that you know is some of that's personal stuff as well I don't mm. think it's always necessarily been work related mm. I try and li- I try not to live life with regrets because I think you do what you, you you make the decisions based on what you have in that moment absolutely and we don't always have our best stuff in that moment mm. so I, I've, I was, I've been very hard on myself the last few years but I think I've, I've got a bit kinder to myself mm. now and you know, some close people close to me have helped me sort of have, get that self love back because it's not easy. No, it isn't. Yeah, you know, a lot of I think a lot of driven people are really mm. tough on themselves. Yeah, really, really tough yeah. on themselves. And one of the most wonderful things you can do for yourself is to be compassionate yeah. with yourself and and learn to you know apply that yeah. self care every day and so even in, in the smallest little way. I think so. Um, and I, I think it's it's a good habit to get into yeah. if you can do that. Yeah. I, I used to be incredibly tough on myself and. Um, you know, when I was first in property, like I was like, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I had to learn to sort of. It didn't get me. It didn't bring me happiness. I love, no. I love property. Don't get me wrong, uh, but I wasn't. Full, I wasn't fulfilled. I think yeah. that's why I do what I do now because yeah. I've learned the fulfilment bit will bring joy to all the other bits. Yeah, you know, exactly. when you have a passion. Yeah. You know, you you might be great. You might be Ronaldo or whatever, yeah. a football player, but actually. If Ronaldo's a fulfilled human being first, yeah. his level of ability and performance Definitely. and enjoyment are going to escalate. Yeah. He, no doubt he'd probably still be an incredible footballer. Yeah. And maybe, you know, but the levels that you can take yourself to yeah. and the enjoyment that you can have, you know, if you can get these basics right, yeah. you know, Definitely. off the chart. Yeah. yeah. Off the chart. And I think that's what we're all, trying, we're all searching for, aren't we, as well, with, mm. you know, that happier I am sort of in myself happy I'm at work and I think mm. the better you are as well mm. so for sure yeah you're certainly in a happy place right now with the baby coming I am um, yeah it's uh, life's good just need to just need to get through the birth <laughs> so here's a quote I always ask this question and we'll, we'll 
probably finish up on this question, but I always ask this question to, to clients um, when they first come, come to work with me. If, if we were to pick up the phone three years from now yeah. and uh, have a conversation and you'd had the best three years of your life, mm. what would you say to me? I've had the best three years of my life. No one's ever um, said that. <laughs> um, What's happened yeah. in these three amazing years? Um, Where are you? Yeah, I think just being adapted and being comfortable to being a mum. Um, I think I've definitely been on a bit of a personal journey. I think went through a lot of my early years, kind of just not really... I don't know, kind of enjoying life and, well, loving life, mm. but probably had to, um, probably had to grow and develop as a person, and that what's happened has, has made me do that. Mm. Um, so I think I've realised the value of inner peace, and when you don't have it, how horrific it is. Yeah. So I think that that balance between all areas of my life but finding that kind of you know when you sat down at the end of the day with a gin and tonic and you're <laughs> <laughs> reflecting on things just that kind of calmness that yeah and that comes back to kind of the spirituality stuff as well I've yeah. always been kind of a spiritual person I think just finding that inner despite what's going on you know finding that kind of calm and happiness yeah even if there are tough things going on in your life is special and it's Amazing. not an easy thing to do no. so I think I'd want to, f I'd want to have a, I'd want to really work on that and have that kind of higher level of inner peace, definitely. Yeah. And I think just, yeah, just be hopefully a good mum and happy, happy personal life and just, and also with my work and what I'm doing, kind of that fulfilment. Would you st you'd still be working at Sky, that would be your aim? Yeah, I, yeah, just see what happens, don't know. I mean, there's other things, you know, I, I want to do more with Reach, I've mm. got, I want to do there's other kind of projects I'm kind of looking at right now so yeah. I want to do a bit more commercially business wise I think because um, you're quite business savvy as yeah, well aren't you? I, I haven't have, really touched yeah, on that no, but you are as I well have, and I, yeah and I and I really like that side of things I'm also conscious of how tough it can be though yeah. and how much time it can take up so yeah I'm looking at probably more kind of investing say looking at other opportunities mm. without actually having to run something myself mm -hmm. so hopefully I can be a part of something that does well and you know yeah, I can get out. <laughs> yeah, well, it's nice when things run, and yeah. that's the beauty of one of the beauties of property, isn't it? If you can get the right sort of portfolio, yeah. that it kind of sits there and, exactly. and feeds the pot, as yeah. it were, without too yeah. much of your intervention. Yeah, so, yeah that's, that's kind of that's a good thing. So, yeah. well, so well, I yeah. wish you well with it. Thank all. you very much. And the inner peace bit, I totally, you know, yeah. I'm totally on board with that. We all we it, we all have it within us. It's how yeah. it's whether we take the time to tap into it. Yeah. We take the time to slow down enough yeah. to listen to our intuition, our gut. Um, and sadly, you know, I think we were saying before we started recording, you know, about slowing down. But, yeah. you know, the way that you're going to get that inner calm and that yeah. inner peace for all of us is to slow down. Yeah. And yet we live in this fast-paced world. Yeah. It can be very difficult, but that's where your best decisions come from, clarity comes yeah. from, intuition comes from slowing yeah. down and giving yourself that space yeah. and that time. And when you learn to do that, this is me having a little bit of a preach, um, <laughs> but when you can learn to do that, yeah. then... You're your own best friend because it yeah. doesn't matter what's going on around you, yeah, whether it's class or work, yeah. you can just bring it back to yourself and yeah. actually know, yeah, but actually I'm okay, I yeah. have breath, I have safety, I have a shelter, yeah. um, I'm a good person. And those are four things for me that I always come back to and I, know, and I have that inner peace and it just comes back to me. It's taken years to be able to get to that point, yeah. but it's such a beautiful thing when you get yeah. it because, you know, the more weight we place on things, the more vulnerable position we put ourselves in. Yep. You know, like we're talking about, you know, athletes or whatever, they put, you know, on this part, how much yep. do they put on this part? You know, is it the be all and end all? Well, you put yourself in a vulnerable I know. position. I know. If yeah. you can do, like you said, just go there and play tennis or go yeah. and play golf. You're fine. You're yeah. fine. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's the goal. That's you know. But like you said, it's a work in progress as well, isn't it? You don't get there and think, oh, I've cracked it. No, I never. <laughs> it's so yeah. I'll keep working on it. No, good. Well, I look forward to seeing what you do and reading oh. Golf Monthly and yes, and um, Reach and being part of Next Gen. Thank you for that. I've enjoyed Welcome. doing that. I'll no, be up in Manchester for that yeah, as well. So perfect. Are you in Ma Manchester? I am. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, I look forward to seeing you there. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. It's been Sarah. a pleasure. Thank you. You've been listening to The Real Life Sports Show. 
I hope you found some value and joy in this podcast. If you have, then please tell someone else about it. And also, while you're at it, why not leave me a five-star review? Also, you can share it on your socials. You'll find me mostly on Instagram at Sam Adams Coach. You can also check me out at my website, sam-adams.com. Send any comments or any interest in coaching or speaking to my Instagram. Just drop me a DM. I look at all my messages and I respond to every single one of them. 